Let me say good morning to all of God's children, both in our sanctuary space as well as in our virtual space. We greet you this morning in the mighty, magnificent, marvelous, majestic, magnanimous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. For it is something about that name, amen. And when we call on his name, it ought to move something on the inside of us. So we greet you in the name of Jesus who allowed us to be here in this place on this day to serve and to worship him. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 149, stanza number one, where the psalmist says, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. He goes on from there and says, even in the assembly, not only let us praise the Lord, but let us praise him with song. Let us praise him with the harp. Let us praise him with the timbrel. Let us praise him with the dance. If God has done anything for you, you ought to praise the name of the Lord. He seems to suggest if there's nothing else that we don't do when we assemble together, if we don't do nothing else, we ought to at least open up our mouths and say, hallelujah, thank you, God, for being mighty good to us. Amen. Come on and join me in a word of prayer today. God, how we thank you as the, as the God who gives us something to praise you for. You could just demand that we praise you simply because you're God. And because you're God and creator, uh, creation ought to just praise its creator because his life comes from the one that created it. And so we could and should just praise you simply because you're God. But God, we don't just praise you because you're God, but we praise you because you're good. You have been mighty good to us, your children. So the psalmist leads us today that says we ought to praise the Lord we ought to uh, sing songs, a new song unto his name. We ought to praise him in the assembly. And since you've allowed us to assemble today, we want to praise your name. Uh, you didn't have to allow us to be here today, but by your grace and your mercy, uh, your protection, uh, your love, thank you, God, uh, for being just, just, just that kind to us. And you did it, God, in spite of us. So forgive us of those things that we've done or not done that uh, should have disqualified us from even entering into this sacred space today. But we thank you that you allowed us to be here. So since we're here, we want to praise your name. Uh, we want to thank you for all of the blessings, all of the good things. And again, most importantly, we thank you for coming in the person of Jesus the Christ to save us from our sins. So we want to, we, 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 we have so much, God, to tell you thank you for. So, God, we ask the presence of your Holy Spirit to be with us, tabernacle with us for a while today, God, so that as we have finished worshiping in this place, both physically and virtually, we'll be able to say it was good to have been in the presence of the Lord. We thank you now for what we're about to experience in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give him some praise today. Let's praise him, let's praise him, let's praise him. The song that says if we don't do anything else, when we assemble in the assembly of the Lord, we ought to praise his name, amen. Uh, I've, I've taught, like most of you have taught, when somebody does anything for you, at least I ought to say thank you, amen. And so since you're here today, you ought to just tell him thank you, amen. Thank you for your goodness to us, toward us, your children. Thank you so much for all your continued acts of generosity and kindness as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Your generous hearts allows us to help change hearts. Amen. That is our goal. That is our drive. That is our desire uh, as we reach people with the gospel and touch them with the love and compassion of Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for your continued faithfulness and acts of generosity amen i also want to just note here on today uh on starting on today 
on this Sunday and next Sunday, uh, we'll be signing up those who are interested in receiving a flu vaccination. Uh, we did that on last year. We offered that as a service to our church family and our broader community, and we're doing that again this year. Amen. Uh, we'll be doing that. The dates for that, that the actual uh, vaccinations will be on October the 26th. Second, amen. October the 22nd will be the Sunday that we will be doing our flu vaccination drive there at our mission house. So if you have not gotten your flu vaccination, we welcome you to sign up. Amen. So there'll be persons from our health ministry that will be in the rear that will take your names. Amen. So many of you, several of you utilized that service on last year and we're offering it again this year uh, to again our church family as well as our broader community. Uh, that's just another way in which we are trying to reach out. Amen. Uh, part of our goals is to be a, a hospitable church, a holy church, a helping church, and a healthy church. Amen. Healthy physically and financially. So one of the ways we help to help to do that is through that of uh, providing things like our flu, uh, our flu drive. All right. So again, let's give God some praise for our flu vaccination drive. We thank God for providing us advancements in medicine to help us to stay uh, safe. Amen. Amen. And uh, again, uh, just, uh, um, you want to do that if you can. Amen. I was reading a poor report and some people say, well, I got the flu shot last year. And they said, well, that's, that's, that, that, that was last year. But this year, there's different strands. So you want to make sure you get vaccinated for this year. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. So that'll be right. So we'll be signing up on today and on next Sunday, immediately following morning worship. Also here on today, the, the month of September is Suicide, um, National Suicide uh, Prevention Awareness Month. The month of September is National Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. And today, September the 10th, is actually World Suicide Prevention Day. And so here on today, we're going to take a moment to observe that. Amen. Uh, that very serious issue. I believe God expects for us to deal with the whole of man. Amen. So not just his spiritual self, but also his physical self and his mental self. Amen. And so we, here on today, we'll be doing that. And so with that being said, our health ministry has gotten resources in the rear uh, for you to take home and look at, amen, get that information, look at it, amen. It may not be you, but it may be somebody you know. You may be able to pick up on something that you weren't aware of by reading that material that may help you save a life, amen. And so, and that, the matter of fact, that, that, that is our mandate. After all, Jesus came to save lives, amen. And so when we do things like that, we are acting, amen, in the mode of our Christ. So please, ma'am, please, sir, take advantage of that material that is there uh, in the vestibule as you are exiting worship here on today. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. And if you're glad the Lord loves you, say amen. amen. Come on and receive this choir here on today.
Let the church say amen. amen. And if you know there is no name like the name of the Lord, amen. Let's give the Lord uh, some more praise today, amen. And let's bless this choir for blessing us here on today as well as give them a hand as well. Praise God for them and their ministry of music here on today. And to God be the glory again for all of the wonderful things he has done and continues to do for us, his children. Amen. Uh, so undeserved, but he's just so good. Amen. And we are thankful to the Lord for his grace and his mercy toward us, his children. Again, just good to be here on today. And again, it's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. Again, to our virtual audience, we greet you again today as well uh, in that name that is above every name. Amen. Amen. Again, as I've already stated, the focus of the day's sermonic thrust will be that subject matter, uh, targeting that mental illness area uh, called suicide. Amen. Uh, we want to address it because, again, we cannot fail uh, as the church not to minister to the whole of man. Amen. Uh, and so it's incumbent upon us that we address uh, those, all of those areas that impact us um, and our lives or the lives of our loved ones, amen, or even just friends. And stated today is um, Worldwide Suicide Prevention Day. And if you know of anyone um, that a family member or friend or know of someone who has been impacted by suicide or been a victim of suicide, one of the things they're asking you to do as part of Worldwide Suicide Prevention Day is between the hours of 8 and 9 o'clock tonight, set a candle out uh, in your window or somewhere in your home just as a way of acknowledging uh, those who have fallen victim to um, that mental illness um, called suicide. Amen. So we want to take a real look at a familiar character by the name of Job. Uh, Job, actually chapter 3, and if we had time, we would just hang out with Job 3, uh, really all of Job, and you can begin to see um, the depth of Job. But chapter 3 offers us a glimpse into Job's uh, despair as he dealt with the things that he found himself having to deal with. So I've often said, I've said before, that there is not a subject matter uh, that faces us that the word of God does not address. Amen. Amen. And so we have to continue to make sure that people know that there is a word for you. No matter where you are in life, there is a word from the Lord. Job chapter 2. Chapter 3, verse 1 is going to be the focus verse, but, but 2.11 gives us some, some, some contextual background without having to go over all of chapter 1 and 2. Job chapter 11, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have it and you're ready to go, say amen. amen. Now when Job's three friends heard of all his adversity, that had come upon him, each one came from his own place. Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuite, Zophar, the Namathite. For they had made an appointment together to come and mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they raised their eyes from afar, and did not recognize him, they lifted their voices and wept. And each one tore his robe and sprinkled dust on his head toward heaven. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights. And no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Chapter 3, verse 1. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. Amen. 
want to use for a subject when you're having more than a bad day. When you're having more than a bad day. It is stated that one in five people will experience mental illness uh, sometime during their lifetime. One in five is a lot, and though even though many people still deal with mental illness, we still have to make sure we fight against the stigma that's still attached to the area of mental illness. We have to fight it because we want people to be able to get the help that they need when they need it. And I contend today that we as people of color have to be even more vigilant because of the latest statistics that has been put forth to us by uh, uh, entities such as NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, as well as the CDC. Uh, NAMI says, amen, uh, or CDC rather says that from data collected between 2000 and 2020, that suicide that's been traditionally at the height among whites is now no longer the case. Their suicide rate is on the decline, but the suicide rates for people of color is on the incline. U.S. News and World Reports, a 2023 report says uh, that whites was, was the only group to see a decline in suicide rates between 2018 to 2021. That's significant for me because that is still in the time frame of the pandemic, which means they fared better by way of dealing with it than people of color. And we have to talk about it and address it because what, it, because what we deal with by way of adults, it also affects our children. Suicide among African-American children between the ages of 10 and 14 has doubled in the last 10 years. And the eerie part about this is, is that the primary mode of suicide is that of hanging. My brothers and my sisters, we, 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 we have to realistically deal with the fact that there are some things that can happen in life that can challenge you to your core. There comes times when you, have, you may find yourself or know someone who may find themselves having to deal with life when they've had more than a bad day. A bad day is one thing. But as we look at Job's narrative, you can find yourself having to deal with life when you've had more than a bad day. Can we dive into our text this morning? As I've stated, September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Today, September the 10th, is uh, Worldwide Suicide Prevention Day. And so we're lifting that subject matter up today sermonically to bless us in this particular area. You read the text just like I did. Amen. This text features that character by the name of Job. Oftentimes we deal with Job as a way of simply saying he helps us to understand how to endure suffering. He helps us understand, amen, uh, that bad things can happen to good people, amen. Uh, just because you dot every I and cross every T does not mean that trouble is going to bypass your address, uh, amen. We live in a sinful, flawed world, and the last time I checked, the devil is still active because he has yet to be chained to his eternal damnated place. So he's still on the rise. He's still walking to and fro, tearing up stuff, and particularly trying to get folk not to turn to God or try to get folk who has turned to God to turn away from God. He's still busy. And the devil will use any method and mechanism he can to derail our relationship with God. That's at the heart of Job's story. 
At the heart of Job's story is the devil, amen, comes and reports to God, amen, in chapter number one, uh, that he's bored. Because he has wrecked everybody else's life and he has nothing really left to do. And God says, well, have you tried my servant Job? And he says to God, well, um, I don't want to mess with Job because you got a hedge around him. But if you remove your hedge and you take his stuff, I guarantee you he will curse you, meaning he will denounce you. God said, okay, I'm not going to do it because I'm not of God of unjust malice like that. But since you dirty enough to do it, go ahead. And the devil did it. Job lost his family, his things, his, his children, and his stuff. Amen. And, 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 and then a time went by. The devil comes back to God again and says, well, the uh, only reason why he did not curse you is because uh, he still got his health. So if you take his health from him, I guarantee you, he'll curse you. God again says, okay, Job, okay, Satan, go for it. And now the devil takes not only his stuff, but also his health. Job now has boils all over his body from head to toe, amen, so much so to where his, uh, to read the description throughout the course of Job's, Job's uh, ordeal, his sores pus, they drain, they dry up, they pus, they drain, they dry up, and he has to constantly scrape the skin from his body in order to try to prevent various infections. But that's where we find ourselves in the text. And I suggest to us before I say a word to those who need to know how to handle life when you're having a bad, more than a bad day, I want to say to us who hear about someone who's having more than a bad day, I want to suggest to us that we must take time to show them somebody cares. When we hear that someone is having or we see that they're having more than a bad day, those of us who see it and hear it must take time to show them somebody cares. One of the greatest impacts on those that suffer with suicidal um, perspectives or ideologies or tendencies is the area of loneliness. The feeling that nobody cares. That's where I wanted to read verses 11 through 13 because chapter th 3, verse 1 says, after these things, after what things? In particular, after the things of verses 11 through 13, it says, and after this, Job opened his mouth. Which seems to say, suggest that Job did not open his mouth until his friends showed up. Let me pause right here a moment and say that when they showed up and saw his situation and the greatness of his grief, they didn't say anything. They sat with him for seven days and seven nights. In other words, they sat with him until Job was ready to open up. Might I suggest to us that the ministry of presence is very important and your presence doesn't necessarily call for your diagnosis. Might I suggest that it is better to sit in quiet than to speak in ignorance. Because when Joe's friends finally speak up, they speak in ignorance because they didn't understand what was going on. And so, therefore, I want to caution you. Even when someone opens up to you, don't you take the role of being the diagnoser uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. or being the one to give the solution. I contend, amen, that if we take a contemporary look at the text, the reason why Joe's friends were not able to deal with Joe's dynamic is because they were out of their pay grade. They weren't equipped to speak for God, and they haven't been trained in psychiatric services. Even I, as a pastor, am cautious in counseling 
because I know where my job starts and where it ends. I know God has given me direction to give direction, not always diagnosis, because I have not gone to psychiatric school. I have not been trained in certain areas. And so, therefore, if I know that, and I do have some training, <laughs> don't you step into that area because you could make the problem worse. But at least show up to show them that you care. Notice when he shows up, they show up, they show up as they showed up. Uh, Job opened up once somebody who cared showed up. He opened up once somebody who cared showed up. One thing that Job lamented about throughout his ordeal was the fact that nobody spoke to him. They looked down on him. They lost respect for him. And it seems to just didn't nobody come talk to him. And the only one that had something to say to him was his wife. And I think sometimes we give her a bad grief because she says to Job, out of all your calamity, out of all what's going on, <coughs> why don't you curse God and die? She was saying, I don't know how to deal with this. I can't figure it out. And baby, I, I contend, she's like, uh, you don't, I, you can't, why don't you just get rid of this? And he said, you're talking like a foolish woman. But, but foolish woman is not foolish as in crazy, but foolish as in one that doesn't know God. So if you know God, your response to situations ought to be different than your response with the folks that don't know God. But when he, they showed up, that's when Job opened his mouth. Sometimes people just need to vent. They need to get it off without having a judgmental ear or a condemnational ear. Because again, you never know what life may throw at you. Secondly, um, about... Uh, showing others that we care, Joe opened up once they showed up, and Joe opened up and let out all he had bottled up. In chapter 3, when it says, and Joe cursed the day that he was born, the rest of the chapter, Joe begins to get stuff out because he didn't understand what was going on. He had dotted all his eyes as far as you know. He had crossed his T's. He wasn't a perfect man, but they had a theological concept of that particular day that said that if you just do right, God will take care of you. If you're of the righteous, he'll bless you. So Job's wealth that he had, the ten children, seven sons, perfect number, three, ten, amen, had three daughters, seven sons, amen. Job's family... And his wealth was a representation of his day that he was a righteous man and right with God. That's why they took counsel from Job. But then what do you do then when you hit a point in place in life where you're now finding yourself dealing with something that you don't have the information to deal with? Job didn't know, he didn't understand, he, 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 he couldn't get it. And he's still having to deal with the loss of all that he had, the loss of his reputation now because the word is now, Job's a hypocrite. So his friends keep coming at him like that. You must have done something wrong because there's no way you could be going through all of this and be right with God. Job, he finally opened up, he opened up, he opened up, he opened up, he opened up and let out all of what he had on the inside of him. And when you get a chance, amen, I, the, the, what he reads and what he shares in verses 3 through the end of the chapter, amen, is, is, is incredible because you begin to see the angst of Job's despair. But at least Job shows us that when you are going through something, amen, or when we see somebody going through somebody, something, we need to show up to simply say, I'm here if you need to get it all out because every now and then you just got to get some stuff off your chest have I got a witness anybody ever walked off somewhere and just hollered for a minute 
Yeah. It's, it's cathartic. That's another way of saying it helps you release pressure. <laughs> Amen. Uh, 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 but but, but that, 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 that's, that's the thing I want to right there. You dig, take time to show them that you care, and when they showed up, that's when Job opened up. That's when Job began to get further into processing what was happening or trying to figure out what was going on. So number one, for those of us who see somebody or hear they're having a bad day, we at least need to take time to show them somebody cares. Amen. Amen. Now to those of us who may find ourselves having to deal with life when we're having more than a bad day, uh, one of the things I want to suggest to you, the text said that he cursed the day of his birth. Job cursed the day of his birth, but he didn't curse the God that gave him birth. That's important. He cursed the day of his birth, but he did not curse the God who gave him birth. Amen. Because they believed in God as creator, and as God as creator, and God as a sovereign God, Job's on the thing at this particular point in time was, I just don't understand what God is up to. That's why he didn't curse God. God is sovereign. God is in his place. I'm showing you in a minute, but Job got to a point where he said, okay, I know you God, but I can't take no more. Come talk to me. Um, but Job, he said, he said, he does it. He said he cursed the day uh, that he was born. He cursed, he cursed the day he was born, the, the day he was birthed, but he did not curse the God that gave him birth. That's important because when you're going through, you, the, the, your, your best friend is God. You, there's got to be a God factor within you that says God is still God. I may not understand what God is doing, but I know God has, is too kind. God is too just as also to say to do anything wrong and then they say he was too wise to make any mistakes which means just because I don't understand it don't mean God is an error or God but you just have to have again back to our previous sermon series that's where that faith factor has to come in there that's when you have to start battling the doubts with your faith and say I need my faith to help me see me see myself through this and when Job cursed the day of his birth he literally wished he had never been born. That's what I mean. He spends the next set of verses saying, I despise the day that my birth was on the calendar. I wish that day could be wiped from history and that I had never been born. Meaning out of all the joy that Job had encountered with his riches and his children, Job finally got to a place in life that said, you know what, all of the anguish that I'm feeling right now does it is more than the pleasure that I felt that I had with them. So, God, I just wish I'd have never been born. Here is Job, who we learn from and look from and respect. It's the same Job who said, I wish I had never been born. Because Job was having more than a bad day. On one day, you know the story. A servant comes in. On the one day, chapter 1 says, on the day that his daughters and sons were dining at the oldest son's house, feasting, a messenger came in and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were beside them and the Sabians came and killed all your servants by the sword and took your oxen and your donkeys. And I alone am left to tell you about it. As he was speaking, another servant came in and said to him, fire, fire. Uh, of God came down from in a lightning storm and it consumed all of your sheep and all of the servants and I alone am left to tell you about it and while he was speaking another servant came in and said that your camels that you had the, 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 the Chaldeans came in three raiding bands they had a systematic approach of taking all your camel and they took them all and killed all of your servants and I alone am left to tell it and while he was speaking another came in and said that an east that a wind from the wilderness came in blew down the house where your sons and daughters were feasting and killed all of them and the servants and I alone am left to tell about it Job was having more than a bad day 
And life can push you to the point to where you'll say, I wish I'd never been born. Job then said, uh, I wish God would just let me die. That's what he says. When he gets down round about the verse 21, 20 and 21, he starts and said, God, why do you even let me see another day? Why, 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 why even allow me uh, to, 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 to see the sunrise? I don't understand this. Uh, so so why, why, why not God just, just so, so he wants to know. But, but the thing I want to highlight again with this is, is that he at least he's still going to God. That's important. He still has a God factor in him that he's using to try to do. So he even says, God, if you don't mind, be merciful and take me out. But I'm glad God is God and not even my wishes. Because if God had honored Job's wishes, we never would have known the story of Job and how that we can make it through whatever life takes you through. God will keep you. You can make it. You can endure it. Job, and then on top of that, if God had honored Job's request, guess who would have won? The devil. And when Jesus says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, he's still trying to do the exact same thing. But I declare in the name of Jesus, we can defeat the one that wants to take what God has given us. Job, Job, Job was in despair, I tell you, Job was in despair. So and so he said, I wish God would just let me die. But here it is right here, and we transition on. One of the things, even though Job expressed his wish that he had never been born, even though he expressed the wish that God would just let him die, he never expressed the wish or the desire to take his own life. Out of all of his wishing, he never expresses the desire to take his own life. And I believe that's because Job, and in, in, in that day, biblical times as well, that they had a built-in God factor that says God is the author and finisher of life. No man has the right to take another man's life or even their own life. You see it play out even when kings go on the battlefield in the, in the story of the king. Read for instance, you read places to where a king might get hurt in battle. And instead of taking his own sword and finishes his life because he knows his life is on the way out because he's been mortally wounded, he'll say to his servant, take my sword and thrust me through. Because there's this perspective is that I, life is a gift from God and I don't have the right or the authority to take what the creator has given. So that's why Job says if he would do it, I pray he would do it. But if he, but if he doesn't do it, then I know he, there's still something going on. And my brothers and my sisters, when you find yourself having more than a bad day, you literally have to put your trust in God. Amen. Trusting that God knows what God is doing and God will bring you. And there's got to be some purpose in what it is that I'm going through. And at the end of the day, Job would say, my purpose, amen, was to show and to tell that God is sovereign and that God will keep you and God knows just how much you can handle. I love this about this story because Job seeks and goes and goes and God waits and you, you would think in chapter 19, we would touch on the minute we get close, uh, you would think by the time, by time we get to chapter 19, God would have figured Job had enough. But there are several more chapters. I think it's around about 39 or 40 before God finally shows up. 30 plus chapters. 
where God is silent. But Job will declare to us today, God knows how much his servants can bear. And if you hang in there, God will show up. Now watch this. He may not give you the answer that you want, but he'll give you the response that you need. Third and final point, we out of here. Job cursed the day he was born, but not the God who gave him birth. He kept his faith in God. And this is the last point. Job cursed the day he was born, but he did not stop looking to God for answers. In other words, he didn't stop praying. If anything, his prayer life intensified. One of the ways you can handle life when you're having more than a bad day, get on your knees and call out on the name of the Lord and, the, and, 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 and trust that the Lord will see you through whatever you do. Don't cut off your communication with your lifeline. Don't cut off God. God, no, you need to keep on calling. That's what Job did. Job called on the name. He kept on looking to God. Job carried his complaints to God, but at least he was still looking at God. Job pleaded his case with God, but he still kept looking to God. Whatever you do, don't stop praying. Don't stop looking to God for answers. I love it. It's demonstrated in some of the verses that we hold near and dear in Job's narrative. Y'all know that verse Job 13, verse 15, though he slay me, yet will I serve him? Y'all know me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for context, amen. The problem with that is, is that oftentimes we mistranslate it because we take it out of the context. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him? That's the A part of the verse. You got to have the B part because B says, even so, I will defend my ways before him. Literally what Job was saying is, is that, is that God, I got an issue and I understand me as a mortal coming to you as God like this, it might cost me my life. But even so, I got to step to you anyway because I don't understand what's going on. So that though he slayed me is not the situation Job was going through. That though he slayed me is the punishment I might get for going too far with God. And I want to tell you today, go as far as you need to go. Go as far as you need to go. God can handle it. And I believe God is gracious enough, just like he did to Job. He let him go so far till he got to the point. He said, okay, Job, enough is enough. Now let's work this thing out. So therefore, after Job said, if I go to God, he might slay me. Next set of verses, Job says, I got two requests from you, God. Number one, take your hand off of me. This hand of wrath that you're dealing with me, that, I've de that I'm dealing with now, is more than what. Take your hand off of me. That's what Job, our beloved Job, that's what he tells God. Take your hand off of me, your hand of wrath. Take it off of me. That's my first request. My second request is, is that I demand answers. I want to know why are you treating me this way? But Job didn't know it was not God treating him that way. It was God using him to show the devil just how strong he was. Might I suggest to you sometimes, sometimes the stuff we go through is not designed, amen, uh, uh, just, 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 just so you're going there. Sometimes we go through stuff so God can show us just how strong we are. And to show the devil that you are committed, no matter what comes, no matter what happens, you're going to hang in there and you're going to trust in the Lord. That's chapter 13. I got to get out of here, y'all. Chapter 14, no answer, and God's hand is still on him. Chapter 15, no answer, he's still suffering with his boils. 
Chapter 16, no answer from God, still suffering. Chapter 17, no answer from God, still suffering. Chapter 18, no answer from God, still suffering. Chapter 19, bless my heart. Because even though Job did not get an answer from God, there's this other mercy we love so much. Job says, uh, uh, one thing I know, I may not know how, why he's not answering me. I may not know how this is going to turn out. I may not ever get an answer to this situation. I may not, I may die like this. I don't know, but one thing I do know is that my Redeemer lives. Job says, my redeemer lives, and one day he's going to set up shop on earth. And when he does, he's going to right every wrong and, and make everything right. So whatever was wrong with me now, I know one day it's going to be all right. And this is what he says. He says, though flesh fall from my, though skin fall from my bones. Even though I die like this. He declares one of the first places where we see the resurrection in the Old Testament as a concept and principle. Job said, I may die like this, but I shall one day. Can I get a one day in the house? One day I'll see him in my flesh. Wait a minute, Job. If your skin falls from your bones and you die in this state, how in the world are you going to see him in the flesh one day? Well, I can't tell you how it's going to happen, but I just believe one day I'm going to stand before him and see him and I'm going to be in my flesh. Joe says, so I'm going to hang on in there. I'm going to press on. Because one day it's going to be all right. So whatever you do, don't throw in the towel. Keep your eyes on the one day. But I'm so glad y'all know who the Redeemer is. Because the only reason Job could say this nigga, God had a redemption plan in the person of Jesus Christ, who was going to die for our sins, be buried in the grave, and declare that he was going to get up on the third day. God raised him, resurrection complete. So one of these glad moments, I don't know when it will be, but we'll all, we may not all sleep, according to the word of God. But we all shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Have I got a witness here this morning? Some will die, some won't die, but we all shall experience what Job calls a see him in a flesh moment. Hang in there because you don't know how the end is going to turn out for you. Job said, if I don't, if, I, if this is it, this is fine. I know it's going to be all right after a while. I serve a God who's too just. I just don't understand what's going on. And y'all know what happened at the end. Job had twice as much stuff as he had before the calamity. Got his children back. Have I got a witness? God does have a way of writing stuff and getting stuff situated. Just keep on trusting God and watch the Lord. He will take care of you. When you are having more than a bad day, go and stick with a God that can carry you all the way. And we're done. When you're having more than a bad day, you're going to feel some things. It comes with having a more than a bad day. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Wasn't nothing wrong with Job. We got to stop making folk feel as though just because they have moments like these that something is wrong with them. No, ain't nothing. it's called being human. We're made from dust. And we're going to have some dusty, shaky moments. Have I got a witness? But keep your trust in God. You may not understand the purpose behind trust in God. Talk to him. Don't be scared to let him know what's on your mind. It helps you get to where you need and get it, get, get it out. Even with God, talk to him. God can handle it. Amen. Invitation to Christian Simonship has been extended. Is there one here on today? We want to invite you to come to Jesus just as you are and experience the salvation that comes through the name of Jesus. Jesus says, 
Yes, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. If you're here today and you have not accepted Christ, the one who came to give you life, life is in him. Place your life in his hands and watch him see you through. That is, the invitation, is there one here on today? May come as a candidate for baptism. You have confessed Christ as your Savior, looking for a place to go as a church, as a part of a church family. We welcome you to unite with us. We're not a perfect church, but we are a church on mission, striving to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Is there one on today? Virtually, you may reach us 859-252-7191. You may reach us Messenger via Facebook or via contact us on our web page. Is there one today? We welcome you to come. glad a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right amen let's give God some more praise today amen this is the second Sunday we have some new members that we need to fellowship in today amen let's give God some praise for our new members if we have any of our new members been fellowshiped in if you're here today if you can make your way up front any of our new members here make your way up front amen any of our new members amen amen I guess anyone be on camera today. Amen. Oh, I thought I seen one. Amen. (laughs) 
Good morning, my sister. How you doing today? Amen. Amen. This certificate is to acknowledge that Sister Alexis Williams has completed new members class. So this says, <laughs> welcome to the First African Baptist Church. This certificate is presented to Alexis Williams on the 10th day of September 2023. N. Elmore is your proud pastor. And so we say to you, my dear, welcome to the fellowship. Thank you. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. Let's keep each other lifted in our prayers, look in on one another, pray for one another, encourage one another. Amen. Uh, there's nothing like having family to take care and lift you up and encourage you. So, again, hang in there. When you're having a bad day, more than a bad day, know that you can survive the season with the Lord on your side. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds now to transition from our uh, worship in the Word to our study in the Word, our Sunday school time frame, and again, our, our virtual audience. Thank you for being with us here on today as well. And to God be good. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 Come on and receive our closing prayer and benediction. God, how we thank you for loving us, keeping us. We thank you for your Word that helps to address every area of our lives. May your word continue to be alive and may we grasp it and receive it and learn from it and grow from it and be all that we can on your behalf. We thank you for this worship experience, how you touched our hearts and hopefully you were touched by our worship. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest and abide with all of us henceforth now and forever that all of God's children say amen. Amen. amen and amen give god some more praise amen enjoy the rest of your weekend and week god bless you